Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do uh, record the show, show as we are doing today, and then it is posted to our um, website for you to watch at your convenience. And I will show you at the end of today's show where you can access um, the recording. Both our live show and our recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, similar, <coughs> excuse me, similar to your state library. So um, we provide services and training and um, support to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, museums, archives, anything and everything, really. It's just anything, um, anything to do with libraries we um, may have something on the show. Uh, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, all sorts of things. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that some, uh, sometimes come on and do presentations for us, but we also bring in guest speakers um, as we have this morning. Uh, with us today is Kendra Morgan. Good morning, Kendra. Hi, good morning. And she is uh, with Web Junction, which is a great service, a great resource that Oh gosh, I don't even know how long it's been around. It seems like forever. <laughs> and um, the Nebraska Library Commission, <clears throat> excuse me, um, helps to support Rev Junction. And we have lots of libraries and library staff here in the state that use it. Um, but we always like to give an update. And it's been uh, a couple of years since you've been on the show. Things it has. Away from us. <laughs> yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah, so I'll hand it over to you, Kendra, to tell us all about what's going on at Web Junction now. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. It's great to be here with you this morning. And we're going to take a little bit of a tour of Web Junction. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. And my goal today is to try and provide you with an overview of the resources and opportunities that are available to all of you through Web Junction. So I am Kendra Morgan, and I work here with the Web Junction team. And I've been on the team for about 15 years. So Krista is right. We've been along for a very long time, um, and it was well established by the time I got here. So we are, we are getting ready to knock on the door of 20 years of providing support to libraries, which is just amazing to me. Um, we are part of uh, OCLC's research team, uh, and it is uh, a really fantastic group of people who are really dedicated and uh, really look for opportunities to both amplify the work of libraries and to help advance that work. So I noted that we're going to do a few things today. One, I want to tell you a little bit more about Web Junction if it's new to you. We've been around for a long time, but people are in different cycles of their careers and coming to libraries new. And so it's always an opportunity to, to pick up some tips and tricks that can help with our continuing education. I'll give you a little bit of a tour of the site. So we'll look at uh, the website itself, and then we also have a course catalog. So we're going to look at that. And then I'll highlight some of the projects that we're working on, because these can really impact the types of resources uh, that you have available uh, to help you support a, a range of topics. And I'll leave some time for questions. Do feel free to pop anything in chat. If you want some clarification on anything, just go ahead and pop it in chat and we'll keep an eye on that. And Krista and I will make sure we get to them uh, before the end of the session. Absolutely. Yep. So let's just dive in and start talking a little bit about um, what Web Junction is. And one of the things that we talk about is that it's the learning place for libraries, right? That's our goal is to be an online learning network um, that provides pre free professional development for everyone and that we take initiatives uh, to scale uh, learning and innovation in projects. So one of the great things about working for an organization like OCLC is that we have a lot of the infrastructure we need to be able to deliver on large scale national projects that can impact library staff across this country. Um, and we started, I mentioned we're almost up on that, um, 
20 year mark, we received a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation um, back in 2002 to build a portal that was really focused at the time on small and rural libraries to help keep their computers up to date. Um, as things have evolved, um, we have expanded the type of work that we do uh, to encompass really all aspects of librarianship. And Krista noted that Encompass will often invite folks from all aspects of librarianship, right? School, academic, public. We primarily focus on public, but we definitely find those intersections. We've been doing a lot of work with school libraries recently. Law libraries have been another place where we've been finding some help and support for the public library community. So the site launched uh, formally in May of 2003. And so, like I said, we'll come up on that 20 year anniversary next year. And we're really excited uh, to be able to continue to bring these types of resources to you. So let's talk a little bit about some of our core services. Um, or actually, the, if you want to go to the website, you can just go. It's www.webjunction.org, nice and straightforward. Our homepage constantly features a new uh, article, usually once or twice a week. Uh, and what we're looking for with our articles is things that help to highlight some of the great work that library staff are doing and to also identify where people found challenges in their work and how they were able to get past those so that others can avoid some of those challenges. And so you'll find a range of stories and information available on the website. Um, this week we're featuring someone who just won an award who's been a collaborator with us on some of those legal services uh, work I mentioned. And she's just a fantastic librarian who works in Colorado and received an award uh, based on some of the work that she did with Web Junction and the work that she does in her local community. And that's just a great story. Um, but aside from it being a, a great happy story about the award that she received, it also highlights some of the really impactful work that she's been able to do in her community, the partnerships that she's made. So we're always looking for ways to amplify that type of work. So in terms of uh, the professional development side, um, the continuing education for library staff, one of our biggest draws at Web Junction is our course catalog. And we currently have more than 400 curated self-paced courses and webinar recordings on a wide range of library topics. So you're going to find everything from management and leadership, library services, outreach and advocacy, technology, interpersonal skills, and it was all designed specifically for a library audience. So you're going to find courses. I think what's also great about the Web Junction course catalog is that we are leaning on some of the strengths in the field. So you'll find recordings from other organizations. So we have some Encompass recordings in there. Yeah. We have Info People who is based in California. Uh, so you'll really have an opportunity to see some of the, the best content that's been put out um, from the library community. There's a great set of resources from the Idaho Commission for Libraries on um, uh, alternative basic library education. For folks who are new to libraries, you can pick up some of the basics in, I think it's a 13 series course that you know roughly take about an hour each. Um, but we're trying to be a place where people can find a wide range of content uh, that they can rely on and get access to 24 seven. So some of the more recent things that we've added to the catalog uh, are creating pathways to civil legal justice. And this has been a really interesting project that we've done in collaboration with the Legal Services Corporation. And this is looking at how library staff can help patrons understand when they have a civil legal issue. And it is not to replace a lawyer. It is not encouraging librarians or library staff to practice the law. It's helping to see that there are resources within your community that people can get access to. Um, this could be anything from dealing with a custody issue, divorce, evictions. Um, and so we worked with some subject matter experts in the field to design a course to help increase the confidence of library staff, right? If you, if someone comes in what can you say to them comfortably and what should you be conscientious of not mentioning when it comes to giving someone information? Mm -hmm. 
But so much of what people come into the library asking about, it's information. It's not advice. You're letting them know that there's a legal aid office in the community. You're letting them know that there's an online filing option that they can take advantage of. And these courses walk you through some of the things that you can be aware of to help when these issues come into your library. Uh, we also have a new collection uh, of courses on digital collection stewardship, and I'll talk a little bit more about those in a bit, as well as supercharged story times. And I say like nothing will get library staff more excited than a class on story times. The youth yes. services, right? <laughs> the youth services librarians are rock stars. They're always really excited about continuing education. And that was a, a great project that we worked on with the University of Washington. Um, one of the things that we always appreciate are the subject matter experts that we're able to collaborate with. You know, we're really good at designing and delivering online training. We have a great platform for doing that, but we also know that there are fantastic library staff in the field, people in the legal field who want to support libraries, um, story time practitioners who can all bring their expertise to Web Junction, and that's one of the things we really look forward to. Just like Encompass, we also have a couple of live webinars every month, um, spotlighting emerging issues and library innovations. Uh, and as with the courses, we sometimes feature subject matter experts from outside the field, but we always strive to have library staff um, presenters to ground the material in real world experience. Um, and so it's one of the things that, you know, when Chris and I were talking about Encompass, it's really looking for a way to connect people to great ideas and possibilities, right? These webinars are an opportunity for us to take an hour and hear from our colleagues, get inspired to try something new. I mean, even if you walked away and read one new article or had a conversation with someone, that's taking time to invest in your work, in your career, in your professional development, and it's all really important. So we look to try and find a few different avenues that people can access. Um, we record all of them as well, and you'll put them in the catalog. And once you've uh, watched one of the sessions in the catalog, you can get a certificate. Same thing if you watch it live, we send out a certificate for anyone who participated. And we'll talk a little bit more about the certificate issue um, when we get into the catalog. So rounding out the core offerings are those regularly published articles, downloadable resources, um, our newsletter, Crossroads. And that's a place, you know, with the website, we're always looking for stories and resources that spotlight success in libraries and how people can learn from the experiences and adapt them for their own community. I think one of the things that when we talk to folks outside of the library community about connecting with library staff is making sure they understand how very different um, libraries can be across the country, right? The, the resources that you have access to, we know are there, there are libraries that are fully an hour away from even a small town, right? Like you may be serving a population of 500, 600 people, or you can go to a, you know, a library two hours away that's serving a population of 500,000. So really understanding that we need to be able to provide resources that help to meet library staff where they are and providing different points of entry because not everyone is going to have the budget, the staff, the time to do a full-fledged massive project but we all have a little bit of time, right? We all have a little bit to learn uh, and finding ways to connect people with those opportunities through short articles, uh, through resources and workbooks is something we're really passionate about. Uh, every two years, we do a user satisfaction survey or a learner satisfaction survey um, that asks people what they value most about Web Junction. And this word cloud is from our responses from the last survey that we did. Um, and it's really, it's something that kind of just makes me happy to see that people really look to us for ideas, things that they can share, resources, um, and that's at the, at the center of it all is the library. So. It's, it's pretty cool work to get to participate in, and you all are the reason that we get to do it. So. 
All right, so let's take a little bit of a tour and I'm just gonna show you some screenshots just to keep the experience a little more fluid um, so I don't have to scroll on you. <laughs> So important to note that at Web Junction, the services are free and open to all, and we do this with the support of organizations like the Nebraska Library Commission and OCLC. And then we also uh, receive grants and funding that help to support and sustain the course catalog. Um, I will say like during the peak, uh, the very early days of the COVID-19 shutdown, we saw an increase of I think we went up to 50,000 users in one day, you know, like over the course, like it just started peaking over the course of, over the course of a month. It was probably, um, it was just astronomical, right? We had that, the same thing here, yes, with Encompass Live, our attendance just went through the roof. Yeah. Um, and it's great though, I mean, the fact that, I mean, like you said, Web Junction and these courses have been around going on 20 years. Encompass Live started in 2009. We've been around for a long time. Um, so we're, I was glad that we and you all could be there as the resources that people, librarians, were not just left floundering when, you know, the usual things that you would attend in person are no longer able to be done. Um, and we were there and people yeah. found us and, and found Web Junction. Yeah, it was kind of crazy when I saw the... <laughs> Exciting. It's <laughs> and a, also, it was and exciting. I'm glad. I think hopefully some of those people are still sticking around with us. I mean, um, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> no. Yeah, we definitely saw a sustained bump. It dropped down. I think, you know, especially in the first six weeks, there was a lot of uh, recommendations from managers and library directors that while we're home, let's do continuing education and here are some resources. And so I think it brought new people to the site and we've certainly seen a sustained bump um, and what we're looking, you know, to really appreciate is that that the scale of being able to handle these things, right? Like that's a huge increase in users and um, being on 24 seven is a pretty cool thing when it comes to continuing education. And I think it's something we've become more used to as the web has developed. Um, and it's definitely something that we see as valuable. I mean, I'm never super excited if someone's you know, watching a webinar at one o'clock in the morning, but if that's when you find some time and you're awake, okay. <laughs> So this is a quick screenshot of the homepage. I, I mentioned that we were highlighting this, uh, the award that was recently given out. And then we have some, we usually have about three or four or five um, of the most recent stories on the homepage. And then at the top, there's a series of links and so this one is for the topic areas. So if there's a specific topic that you're interested in, you can navigate to topic areas and look through and click on any of those different topics uh, and find that content. So we've touched on a few of these things as we've gone through, but just to, to overview those free learning events, we've got the two webinars, um, the course catalog with the self-paced resources, the new articles and stories. Um, Crossroads comes out two times a month. Uh, that's our newsletter. It's coming out today. Uh, and that just is, you know, there's usually three stories or three courses highlighted in there. We try to keep it pretty succinct. Um, you will definitely find us on Twitter and Facebook. And then another aspect of the work that we do uh, is researching trends in learning in libraries. And that is something that comes into our projects, uh, which I'll get into in a little bit. So let's touch a little bit on what informs the work that we do. So I mentioned that we have that member survey. Um, we like to ask folks what they're interested in uh, and what they need to be able to do their jobs well. And so we do that every two years and just to check in to see. And I will say they things stay pretty consistent. Um, every now and then there's a little bit of flux in the top three but they stay pretty steady and those things often tend to be um, customer service is a really big one that people are interested in. Um, and um, I think that that just reflects that ongoing need to want to understand how to engage with patrons, um, how to bring some of the best of maybe the retail world. Some people are really uh, attached to that. Like, what is it What is it about the Disney experience that keeps people so engaged and excited? Um, how can we bring aspects of that uh, to libraries? Um, state libraries are another source of understanding what we need to focus on. And 
we often uh, meet with our state library supporters and get some feedback on what they've been working on and what we might be able to support and align. Um, we also get feedback from our webinars uh, and our grant activities. So we usually have at least one or two active grants. Uh, we often work with the Institute of Museum and Library Services, IMLS. So we apply for competitive grants like many other organizations. Uh, and we've also been working um, as a partner with a lot of organizations on their grants. So someone wants to develop a training and they want to host it on Web Junction, for example, so that they don't have to worry about the infrastructure side or sustainability and long term because we have that aspect of the work covered. And then we're also looking at innovations and trends in the field to help inform what it is we might want to do. So back on the website, um, there's also our projects tab, and we have four current projects in that are active. Uh, digital stewardship training, um, a project on the opioid crisis, uh, reopening archives, libraries, and museums, which is focused on the COVID-19 response, and then transforming school library practices. And we try to keep all of the materials from our past projects as well, because those can be helpful um, in informing folks. And as long as they continue to be active um, or the content is up to date, we try to keep them available. Um, we do need to do a little bit of weeding, just like most libraries, and, and do a little cleanup. <laughs> Our webinar calendar, I mentioned we usually have about two a month. And oh, this is an old slide. Um, but we have some sessions coming up on supporting veterans, uh, on technology trends that are on the horizon for 2022 and beyond. And these are all hosted via WebEx and uh, are free for anyone to attend. And if you miss the live session, you'll be able to get into the recording. Our newsletter. In order to get the recordings, you do, do you have to register for the live one or no? If you register for the live one, you'll get a note that the recording is available, but the recording goes right into the course catalog, so you can always go back and find it. And then the newsletter will come out again this morning, sometime a little bit later this morning, and we do two issues each month, highlighting those articles, learning opportunities, um, try to keep it sweet, and short and sweet. All right. This is a screenshot of the course catalog and the URL for that is a little bit different, but you can always get to it from the, um, from the Web Junction site. So it's the course catalog. Uh, and we use a tool called Moodle and you'll need to have an account in order to be able to uh, get into Web Junction. So once you have that account, it will, uh, track all of your courses so you can go back and see what you've done in the past. Um, you're always welcome to close your account if you ever need to, but that will be one place where you can maintain all of your learning and keep an eye on what you've worked on on the past and what's in progress. And I'll mention here, since you did mention Moodle, um, that is also what we use here at the Library Commission to do our basic skills courses and I think a few other things that we're putting in there now. Nice. Um, but Moodle is the uh, the product that can create these kind of courses. Uh, your Web Junction Moodle account is going to be different from your Library Commission Moodle account. So if you hear the word Moodle and you say, oh, okay, I have one of those, no. <laughs> you will have to sign up for Web Junction's Moodle to use theirs. And if you're a Nebraska library, sign up for Nebraska's Moodle in our basic skills to use ours. And if you use it anywhere else. Yeah, it is. It is that. one of the great, uh, you know, like never ending battles about the number of accounts we all need to be able to um, <laughs> participate in our lives. So it's pretty nuts. Uh, this is an example of one of those courses I mentioned that customer service is always really popular. Uh, and this is a course called Extreme Customer Service Every Time. And what you'll find is some recorded video and then some knowledge checks to help you. Uh, think about what you've learned and you take those knowledge checks and then at the end you can get a certificate of completion. And I mentioned sometimes there, most of, I would say the vast majority of content in the catalog is for um, about an hour. Some of the longer projects and 
and courses can be up to 15 hours. And so that's looking at a multi-week thing, but the vast majority is, is for an hour. You will get a certificate of completion. And so if you're in Nebraska, this can count for your continuing education. If you are in another state, you'll want to check with your state library. If you are required to have um, CE credits, you'll want to check with them to see if it applies in your state. If your library requires continuing education credits, just always check with your, um, your organizer about whether or not um, these credits will count because some people are like, courses count, webinars don't, things like that, so. This is another example of a self-paced course. This is on reader's advisory services. Uh, and you just walk through, you take the course, answer questions. Um, and it's really just a, and this one is also an hour, right? So it's giving people a little bit of a primer on some of these things. So I think for those of us who are new to libraries, there are some great courses on, you know, shelving with Dewey or shelving with LC. LC, Library of Congress classification. Um, there are things that can help people who are first time library workers, pages, um, get familiar. And then there's things that are way more uh, involved and intense. And that's some of these courses here. So these are all multi-week courses um, that we've worked on. So making space for active learning in your library, uh, creating pathways to civil legal justice, which I mentioned earlier, and then of course that supercharged story times. So these are all multi-week courses that you can enroll in. There's no timeline. No one's going to say, hey, you didn't get to that this week. It's okay. We understand that your jobs um, sometimes require you, you know, to be all in, like I wouldn't even think about talking to somebody about <laughs> who was doing summer reading program in the summer. It's like hands off, right? Um, <laughs> but they're always gonna be there for you to come back to. And I think that that's important that we acknowledge that 15 minutes sometimes is enough that we can spend just a little bit of time reading about something that is interesting or that's going to help us in our job. If you have an hour, great. Maybe you can do a webinar over, you know, throughout the course of the day in four 15 minute chunks. Don't beat yourself up about not being able to do it all at once. Um, we can't do it all at once, um, but do take the time because this is important and you are important um, and taking the time to help reinforce that I think is really valuable. So the next little bit I wanna talk about is um, socializing the learning that we have and, and how to enhance that learning. Um, I am one of those people, you know, like I kind of have a, a love-hate relationship with social media, for example, right? Like I, I do it for work and then I, I do like to see what people are doing. Um, I love that I can check in and, you know, see cute cat pictures or, um, you know, puppy videos. And, uh, and sometimes I get to learn a little about work. Like I'm on social media and I read tweets and I'm like, I didn't know about this new project. Um, so there's that type of socializing, right? But then there's also the socializing of learning that we can do with our coworkers, with people within our state, um, people nationally even. So I wanna talk a little bit about how you can socialize your learning. So when I think about the idea of how to enhance our learning, and these webinars really are one of those ways because you can chat, right? You can chat and participate and, and hear from other people in the field. One of the ways that we've done this with Web Junction is with learner guides. So for most of our webinars in the last three years, uh, we have produced a learner guide with the support of the presenters. And that guide is designed to help continue the learning once you leave the session. So it has some questions about reinforcing what you heard and putting it into practice, right? Which is, you know, that's sometimes the hardest step is we hear all this great information and then how do we actually do something with it? Right, and then what? I've learned, I've heard so much great, so many great things now, I'm kind of overwhelmed. What do I do now? <laughs> How exactly. Do I, you know, bring this into my um, library yeah, or my community. Yeah. And so those learner guides are designed to do that. And I think what's nice about it as well is that you can use that learner guide to guide a conversation with your staff, with your colleagues. You don't have to be a subject matter expert to ask a question, right? But you can say, well, 
when you looked at Web Junction, which topics resonated with you the most? Things like that help to reinforce the fact that, okay, I looked and I saw that, and yes, that customer service really does resonate with me the most. Reader's advisory resonates with me. And it's that act of reinforcing and having that conversation is the hope with those learner guides that they give you some of that structure. And you will find the, the learner guide linked when we have them on all of the Web Junction event pages for webinar descriptions, as well as within the catalog as a resource. The next way that we think about that is learning circles or cohorts, um, co-learners. And this really can tie back to the learner guide as well. So what can we do together? And again, you don't have to be um, the subject matter expert, right? Sometimes people just need someone to give them that little nudge. And I promise that can be you. <laughs> you don't have to take on too much, but it can be you. Um, you can be the one that says, hey, why don't we try this? Why don't we um, explore um, going through this learning together? And I'll talk about some of the ways that you can help support a cohort um, on the next slide. I think webinar viewing together or a follow-up discussion, again, tying back to the learner guide is another great way to do something is if there is a really hot topic or any topic really, and you all watch the webinar on your own time or together and then come up and have a discussion, right? Come together and have a discussion. Use the learner guide as a way to inform that discussion. If the questions don't you know, and we're talking, there's four or five questions in the learner guide. It's not a 20 page workbook. Um, it's a way to help um, take some of the pressure off of leading those conversations, but to help reinforce the importance of them. And then there's always, I mean, integrating into your learning plans and performance expectations. Uh, I think there's been a great, um, we've highlighted a great program at a library called um, If You Give Staff an Hour, right? Every week, if you give staff an hour off the desk or dedicated for continuing education, how can that improve um, the way that they learn, what they share, how they feel about their work, um, and that that's one way to help reinforce it. And it becomes part of the expectation that we are a community of lifelong learners supporting lifelong learners in our libraries. Motivating fellow learners to take the next step. Like I said, it can be you. Uh, you can be the person that helps to do this. Um, and what does what? Uh, how does that take shape? You don't have to be a manager to be supportive, right? You can be a colleague. You can be anybody. Um, and that is an important part of every organization that we lead from where we are and that encouraging people to take the time for themselves um, to learn something new or to explore something. It's, a, it's empowering for people to hear that. So it can be you. And then growing as a learning organization, right? We are, that's so core to what libraries do is supporting lifelong learning. I think that's one of the things when I talk about my work with libraries, um, rarely do you hear anything other than I just love libraries, right? People love libraries because of all that they have connected them to throughout their lives. Even people who don't use our libraries are still often supporters, right? They see the value in it. Um, and we can continue to grow as a learning organization and model that for our communities. So I mentioned the importance of um, learning cohorts or coming together as learners. Um, and this is something that we've seen happen um, uh, statewide. So both like, examples in Texas and Montana, where people have been meeting virtually, sometimes in person, this is even before the pandemic, um, where they were meeting together to talk about a topic that was important to them that they wanted to participate in, but it was somewhat localized, right? So it's all librarians from a specific region, library staff um, from you know, the northwest corner of the state or across the state with, with common interests. Um, and what's nice about that is that it gives people a chance to develop common language about the topic, right? We all say we're going to talk about these things in a similar way, and so we know what we're talking about. Um, you can have post-event discussions to find local relevance. So how does it relate to you, um, to your organization, to your community? Um, brainstorming ways to apply the work um, 
creating action plans, I think is a great next step. And that's something you'd find in the learner guides as well. Like what are next steps that you can take? What's important to consider as you move ahead? Um, and then thinking about if you have any shared goals, this might be a little bit more applicable in a it, within the single library, like having shared goals on working on something, but it's certainly not um, restricted to being a regional or statewide thing. A lot of times we might be thinking about different issues related to, you know, getting increased funding or helping to um, get support for a new project or program. We have shared goals around those things. So there's just a lot of opportunity there to think about who in your network might you be able to engage with and talk with and again, these don't have to be long-term commitments. And in fact, I would encourage you that if you pursue something like this, understand that three or four weeks meeting once a week is enough. Like you don't have to say, we're going to do this for the next you know, <laughs> two years. Um, you can yeah. start small, you know, you can start small and see how it goes and help to distribute the responsibility for some of these things. It doesn't always need to be the same person. Um, but these are really empowering opportunities to help to reinforce our learning. We have created, because we really did do find that this um, group facilitation is a powerful learning tool. And there is, we've taken some in, inspiration from peer-to-peer -peer university, PTP, 2P. Uh, <laughs> and the work that they have done on learning group facilitation. And this is something that, um, it's a free resource guide that we've put on Web Junction. I'll pop it in the chat um, when we get to the end of the session. And it really just helps to think about some of the practices on learning facilitation. So if you are new to training, if you are a seasoned veteran when it comes to training and facilitation, there's a lot here that we can all benefit from um, and adapt. And I think that adaptation is a really important thing for us all to remember no matter what we're doing is Almost everything you find on Web Junction is published under a Creative Commons license. We want you to take it, adapt it, make it your own. We know that people often don't have that time. Like it is a real challenge to, to take that work. But when you find something, just remind yourself that you don't have to take all of it, right? You can take a section, a chapter, a question and apply that to your work. You can start small. Right, so this workbook on learning group facilitation, it's pretty long and it helps guide you through best practices like how to be prepared for the next session, what to give people in advance, but maybe you're just going to have one session, right? You can take the bits and pieces that can help you and leave the rest behind until you need them. Um, don't get overwhelmed by the possibilities, um, just start small. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important that we continue to reinforce that the idea of a culture of learning, right? Learning is the business of libraries. That's what we're doing. Um, that's that's what that's what we show up for. Um, and the importance of being able to motivate ourselves and others. The fact that you were all motivated to come here today, thank you. Um, but you taking that time as much for yourself as for your community, right? This ends up paying dividends. The time that we spend investing in our own continuing education our own professional development benefits our communities and our workplaces, our colleagues more broadly. So kudos to you. Um, and it models learning, right? Taking the time to do this and talking about it is important, right? Like sharing with people like, oh, I took this class. I took this webinar. And Krista was saying, tell everyone that you know, like, please take this, like participate, show up. Um, it's here for you, right? Um, it also helps to reinforce uh, supportive learning relationships. People often find someone who they really resonate with. Like I like to go to this, you know, book club reading with a certain person because they ask such great questions um, and th that you feel supported in those environments. Or I really like um, watching webinars with, you know, with Julie because she is um, she has good insights after the session. So anything like that, and you can be that person for someone else. So 
Um, I think anytime we have the opportunity to flex these muscles and to help to grow um, is a great benefit to ourselves and to our community. So let's talk a little bit about some of the projects that Web Junction has that helps inform the content that you'll find on the site. Uh, supporting library responses to the opioid crisis is work that I've been doing since uh, about 2017. And uh, this is a IMLS funded project. And this really started um, as many library staff were reporting concerns with opioid use disorder in their communities and the impact that it was having in the libraries and IMLS, uh, we worked with them to capture case studies of how libraries were responding to this work and what could be done at a local level. And this can take a lot of different, uh, it can manifest itself in a lot of different ways. Um, and we have three publications that are available. Um, one is an overview of the research that we did and the case studies um, themselves. So there's a summary report that looks at what we have seen nationally. There is a, uh, the actual case studies that look at eight different libraries across the country and how they were approaching opioid use mis disorder within their community, uh, how they worked with their staff to implement those programs, and then um, a call to action. And the call to action is really encouraging folks to look at um, how we can support um, opioid use disorder in our communities and I would say like this is really impactful when you think about um, the individual community members that are impacted. Sometimes this is our colleagues. Um, it may be ourselves and our friends and family and understanding the depth of the issue in our communities is really important. Um, and again, this looks very different in all kinds of communities. One of the, the communities that we profiled uh, in Rhode Island, they, uh, it's a fairly affluent community and they didn't have a, the statistics and the data didn't show a high concern about opioid misuse, but they could look at the surrounding areas and know that this was impacting the community. And so they focused on mental health, right? They focused on being able to talk about your feelings, um, stress management, things like that to help prepare people and to give them tools and resources in the event that they um, were feeling overwhelmed, right? Which is one of the things that happens that sometimes leads to opioid use disorder is um, when we feel overwhelmed, stress, and it's a coping mechanism. Um, this was one way to for them to help the community. And they didn't talk about opioids, right? They talked about stress management and mental health management. We also spend um, an entire section in that call to action around focusing on library staff care. This is a very challenging topic and um, there are no shortage of stories of libraries that have had um, overdoses on the property where staff have actually revived individuals or unfortunately sometimes someone has died as a result of those of an overdose at the library. Um, and the impact that that has on library staff is very real. It's a very traumatic experience and how do we look at that and how do we prepare for that and I would say that that goes well beyond um, any type of substance misuse, right? Traumatic events that happen in the library, understanding how we can support staff, what resources can we connect to in the community that could be helpful for um, helping to uh, find access to therapists or counselors um, and who can come in to talk about some of the challenges that we've seen and validate the concerns that people are seeing. Um, so I encourage you to check that out uh, and we're continuing to add to that body of research as well. And looking at this slide, actually, if you go back to that previous yeah. one there that you had, um, just looking at this, it just kind of, it can remind me, we do here in Nebraska, and some libraries may know about this, do um, public library accreditation and libraries have to come up with a community needs response plan as part of that when they renew their accreditation every five years. And looking at community data and what's going on in your community and what you can do is a big part of that. And this here is exactly what I try and tell them. Dude, these are the things you can do. These are the steps. So this is a very good, good, you know, just for any topic, not just for the opioid crisis. This is some, this is a process you could use for anything that you want to try and address in your community. Getting that community data is the first step. 
what's going on what is the big issue here and then all these other things are things that you can do um and as you said tailor it to your what's going on in your community and in your library it's going to be you know specific to you um but um this kind of just jumped out at me it's like yes 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 do all that for anything <laughs> you go ahead and take the chart <laughs> I will borrow. Like you said, everything is shareable. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm exactly. talking about this too, since you mentioned that for um these slides of Kendra's will be available to everyone afterwards with the recording as well. So if you wanted a copy of this for yourself or any of these things, um, we'll have it available with the archives afterwards. Absolutely. So reopening archives, libraries, and museums uh, mm -hmm. it was a COVID-19 research project. And I would say the reopening part was a little bit funny because some libraries, you know, during the pandemic didn't close for very long at all. They were open quite quickly. Um, some took a lot longer. Um, and, um, but the program has been going on for over two years now uh, in response. And some to opened and closed and opened and closed depending <laughs> yes. on the COVID situation <laughs> in their community. So it was a, yeah. yeah. And that's part of what we talk about in the project is how this is an ongoing, um, it's an ongoing challenge. And one of the things with Realm, so that's the acronym, um, was going through and finding some resources uh, and uh, doing research on how long, you know, coronavirus lasts on materials that are often found in our libraries and museums. One of the resources that came out of this that has resonated with me since the first time I read it was on five rules for managing uncertainty in a pandemic. And that was based on an article uh, in BMJ, which used to stand for British Medical Journal. And these researchers talked about how the feeling that we all had, the challenges that we had with making decisions, like the decision fatigue and you know, as a library director, like how do you decide what to do? Like taking into account all these information and then there's the information you know you don't have, right? And what does that feel like? And it really, that article helped me so much and it still does just the idea of naming the challenges that we all have, like decision fatigue, right? It's like what you are feeling is totally normal and people are dealing with it constantly. And I think that boomerang that Krista was mentioning is exhausting, right? Like we make one decision, two days later, we have to take it back. You get tired of it, your staff gets tired of it. The public is like, what are you doing? Um, but sometimes that's the best we can do. Like that is you're operating on information that you have at the time. So I hope you're all giving yourselves a little bit of grace um, when it comes to these things, because it is very difficult. Um, and that article, like I said, it's one of my, it's one of the outcomes that I really appreciate from Realm. But there are also things in there that are important, like reopening considerations and what should you think about? And some of these things are going to have longevity well beyond the pandemic, right? We're going to be able to look back and say like, hey, how do I apply this to any public health crisis or natural disaster even? Yeah, it's very similar. Yeah, there's lots of things that happened. And I like the realm stuff that's that, that was done too, because you see the uncertainty of libraries being a place in, of where people are coming in and out all the time and bring returning the materials. And we've dealt with things like bed bugs and other you know, yeah, <laughs> things that come in with what we get returned. So we know that that's an issue. Um, and I was really glad that they did that study. Like you said, on the previous page, it showed that chart of um, the previous slide, the how long everything survives. That was a big concern people had at the beginning, I think. And it was very scary. Do we touch this? What do we do? Oh my gosh. Um, luckily it turned out, eh, this virus isn't that great at surviving on those things. So that was one thing that got, you know, uh, figured out um, luckily I'm so I'm glad they did all that research for us um, but it's good to have this still because because with the pandemic still ongoing um, the current um, the, the BA5 that is um, flaring up now here in Lincoln they just reinstituted a mask mandate for city employees wow. so things are going back that way again of potentially you know because things are getting bad again because it's still ongoing so yeah I'm gonna keep uh, this in in at hand for, for ongoing reference, I think. <clears throat> yes, for sure. So other courses, this is that supercharged story times course, and this is a self-paced course. Again, this is one of our longer ones, but take it at your own time. You don't have to do it all at once, right? You can take it over the course of three, four months, whatever works with your schedule. So you find that in the course catalog, um, creating pathways to civil legal justice. And I mentioned this at the beginning, but the, 
civil legal justice, um, the justice gap really dispro disproportionately affects low-income people in the United States. And it's that divide between the civil legal needs of low-income individuals and access to the resources that they need. And libraries can really help with this by giving people access to public access computers, um, databases that they may not have access to outside of the library. Um, and so this whole project was designed to help increase your knowledge, your confidence in being able to respond and recognize when there is a civil legal issue at play. Uh, and it's really, again, take it at your own time. It's a several week course um, with some activities and things, but it takes you through exploring resources, um, strengthening your civil legal reference collection within the library. Um, and a huge part of it is identifying and cultivating re uh, relationships with organizations uh, that do legal aid or legal referrals. And even if your library is in a smaller area without someone in town, a lot of these places now are becoming very comfortable with doing um, just like telemedicine, you know, telelegal support. Um, there are a lot of opportunities and those organizations have grown in how they provide access to those services. So don't think that just because there isn't one in your community that you don't have access to one. So you'll learn a lot of that in the course freely available to you. And then we have Digital Collection Stewardship. This is one of our newest courses. We have two published now. There's a total of eight coming. And this is looking at um, tribal um, archives, libraries, and museums, particularly on the smaller side, and how to manage their digital collection. So we're doing this with the Washington State University and a project that they had well established and helping to turn it into a series of courses that you can uh, take and help figure out how to manage your own digital collection stewardship. And it's really um, a good introductory course to somebody who might be new to that content. And it's something that we uh, really encourage you to take a look at in terms, if you have content that you want to digitize, but you're not really sure where to start or what the process would look like, it's going to be a good beginning uh, beginner's course. All right. That is all I have, Krista. I'm happy to take some questions and see if anybody uh, anything that's uh, come through. Sure, yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. I am going to first um, there we go. bring up my screen. So we have our web page up here. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, yes, yeah. so if anybody has any questions, anything you want to know more about Web Junction, the courses, CE credit, et cetera, et cetera, um, let us know here. Type into the questions section if you go to webinar inter interface and we will grab those for you. Um, I will also mention, and I'm going to do unmute right now. Yeah, okay. Um, also on with us today is Holly Duggan, who is our CE coordinator here at the Library Commission. Um, if she has anything she wants to share about what we have available here, and we'll get into that in a bit as well. Um, I've unmuted you on my side, Holly, if you ever want to unmute yourself and pipe, pop, pipe in on anything. Um, we do have a question actually from someone uh, just popped in here. Um, is there a corner for emerging technology? I think I for that. We do have a technology section. I would say it's not as... Uh... There's probably not as much content, but we do have a webinar coming up at the end of August on uh, emerging tech trends uh, for 2022 and beyond. And that's with David Lee King. Um, ah, there it is. Yeah. Right there. August 30th. Yeah. I know David, yes. He's great. He's really great. And he always has some great insight and he's a great presenter. Um, so that would be a great session to attend or to add to your webinar watch recording. Highly recommend David, yes. And definitely watch this one, August 30th. Okay, here. That's a Tuesday. Okay, yeah. I looked at my calendar. I said, on a Saturday? It's like, no, that's July. Okay. <laughs> it's not on a Saturday. It's on a Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> and you can see there, um, there's the links for the learner guide. We add captions. Yeah, um, the there. chat mm -hmm. all gets recorded. So once the session is done, we add all of those things to the, uh, to the event page. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So even if you can't attend this one or can't register for it, come back later and you'll have the recording and all the resources available. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then you can see here's the other upcoming ones. They have two community-led planning. Awesome. I'm going to highly recommend that one. And then that civil legal issues that you were talking about. Yeah, that one's on natural disasters. So this is a new level uh, of work. So a lot of it is, you know, what happens if you apply for aid from FEMA, for example, and get declined, that actually becomes a civil legal issue. So um, how can libraries help um, in terms of supporting individuals through that? Cool, all right, yeah. And I see this is related to that uh, course series that you have too so mm -hmm. that's not a requirement to, to before this but it would be helpful no you don't even I think this is one where you know you take a one hour webinar and it might pique your interest in doing the full course um, right. it sure. it builds on that series but they're not dependent on each other yeah yeah awesome all right, so on our website, so if anybody has any questions, go ahead and get them um, typed in. Um, Holly said she's having some issues with her microphone, but that's okay. She's here if you do have any questions for her um, in, in the chat, or I'm she's texting with me here too, to keep up on things. Um, on our Library Commission website, um, from any page over here under Education and Training Flyout menu, way over here, we have a link to Web Junction. So if you wanted to find it there, of course, just going to you know webjunction.org would get you there too. But this is where we have our link directly to the main page um, as well. It is uh, for our boards certifications and librarian certifications. Attending Web Junction webinars are eligible for CE credits for either one of those. Um, of course, for a board, it would have to be something to do with being a board member, your job as a board member. So you can see here we list workshops, webinars, in person, uh, watching live or watching recorded. Either one works for that. And for our librarian certifications, how to earn CE credit, we also mentioned webinars, workshops, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so for either one of those, you could earn CE from attending any of these uh, Web Junction sessions. And um, like Kendra said, you'll get the certificate, so you could use um, that if you wanted that for proof for your own library. But um, for our purposes, you would need to submit our CE form for if you've attended something, you don't just send us that certificate. We have our own system. This gets uh, put into our, our, gets into our assistant, Mary here, and she gets it into your, um, your CE record here at the Library Commission. So uh, you will get something certifying from Web Junction saying, hey, yes, you attended this, but if you want to get CE credits from us applied to your librarian certification or your board certification, you will need to submit the uh, correct CE form. There's a form for librarians who are doing it. And if you go to the board, there's a different form for the boards to submit. So if your library board is attending anything. It's a note from Mary wanted, to, Holly wanted to make sure I mentioned that, that you do fill out one of our forms after completing a webinar or a course from Web Junction. Um, go and submit one of those forms and that's how you will get then your CE applied to whichever certification that you are working on. All right, and I do have the link here to the course catalog. Hey, Kendra did share that earlier, learn.webjunction.org. So that's how you can get in and get set up to do any of your, take any of the courses they have there. Um, and I also mentioned, uh, uh, Kendra did say that we do help support uh, this. It's actually with funding. Um, the Library Commission actually provides, it has some of our budget that we allot to um, helping Web Junction um, continue and, and go on. And I think that's something that's mentioned somewhere on your page here about how who, uh, is that an about us thing? Yeah, we have 32 state libraries that provide cooperative support, which is really, you know, that that's amazing and so appreciated because it does help to extend the work that we do. It allowed us to be, a, you know, to be able to respond when so many more people needed access to continuing education. So it's certainly something that we appreciate. Yeah, and this is something that here at the Library Commission, we're we're committed to continuing to support Web Junction as long as it's around. Um, it's never usually an issue for us. It's built into our budget as a, as something that we will every year do our annual uh, to keep things going. Um, we and we do get we do get statistics on um, who attends things. Mm -hmm. so 
know our libraries are, are using it. So it's a, definitely, we, we uh, it's definitely worth it and a benefit to us. And so we highly recommend it to all our libraries, any library, any library staff in the whole country, of course. <laughs> Thank you. So anybody have any, we're a little after 11 o'clock here. We did start a little after 10, that's okay. Anybody have any last minute uh, desperate questions they wanna ask? Um, of Kendra or of Holly. I've got her you know, available here for um, here at the Library Commission. Um, you can type into your questions section, let me know. You, of course, can always ask questions here. You, you know how to contact us here at the Library Commission, too. <laughs> um, and is there any last minute things before we wrap up that uh, Holly, you want to make sure we mention, or Kendra, that you want to say? Well, I'm seeing if anyone else has any other questions. No, just thank you. And you're welcome to reach out to me as well. Um, uh, Krista can share my email address. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out directly. Yeah. Nope. Holly says she doesn't have anything else either. Awesome. All right. Um, I think we will wrap it up then. So it doesn't look like anybody else has any questions they're asking. That's fine. You all know where to find the resources here. Um, and of course, the recording will be available about this. So uh, thank you everybody for attending today. Thank you, Kendra, for being with us. Thanks, Holly. Next time we'll figure out getting your microphone working. <laughs> There's always something. <laughs> um, let's see, let me get back to our Encompass Live page here. Yeah, here's the session page for this show. Um, as I said, the show is being recorded and it will be on our um, archives. This is our main Encompass Live page. Um, can Compass Live is easy to find on the internet. If you use your search engine of choice and type in and Compass Live, the name of the show, we're the only thing called that on the internet so far. Nobody else is allowed to use that. <laughs> um, and you'll get our main page here with our upcoming shows, but then right underneath there is a link to our archives. Uh, the most recent ones will be at the top. So today's will be at the top here. Um, everything should be done and processed through YouTube and GoToWebinar by the end of the day tomorrow. Everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me. Um, and then we also push it out onto our various social media. We do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live, if you like to use Facebook. We also use the hashtag Encump Live. Here's a little abbreviation here for other social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram. I think that's what we're using so far. So you'll get notifications about that. Um, here on our Facebook page, you can see a reminder about today's show, uh, in, uh, meeting our presenters. And then here's last week's recording of is available. So we put out notifications about that on here and our Twitter and, or you can just check the page and see when the recording's available. Like I mentioned earlier, our um, Encompass Live premiered in January, 2009. And we have all of our show archives here on this page. I'm not gonna scroll all the way down because it's obviously huge. <laughs> um, but we do have a search feature at the top here. You can search for any topic you wanna look in the, all of their show archives, or if you just want something very current, you can limit it just the most recent 12 months, 12 months back from today. Um, just if you are look, watching something old, um, as Kendra mentioned, you know, the, sometimes things need to be weeded or, you know, old information removed. Uh, we aren't doing that here. Um, as long as we have a place to host all of this for historical purposes, we're just keeping everything there. And right now everything's there in our YouTube. So just pay attention to the original broadcast date of anything. Uh, some of the shows may stand the test of time and still be good, valid, useful info, uh, but some information may become outdated. Um, services and products may have changed drastically or might not even exist anymore. Um, people who put on presentations might not work at that library or location anymore. Um, so just pay attention to the original broadcast date when you are watching something older. Uh, all right. So that wraps up for today's show. Um, next week, uh, it is the last Wednesday of the month. So that means it's Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Uh, the last Wednesday of every month, Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, comes in the show and talks about something techie. And this uh, month, she's bringing in a guest speaker, Brian Pitchman, who's from the Evolve Project, is going to talk about the um, his, uh, he attends the Consumer Electronics Show, um, technology trade show. And there's lots of resources and things there that libraries can use. He tries to get libraries involved in that and in, in, in the minds of people in technology. Um, this was a session that was originally scheduled for June 15th. Um, but Brian was unable to, he had to cancel out on that show last minute, so we rescheduled it um, for this. So if this is something you thought you'd seen before, you did. It just did not happen last month. It's rescheduled for next week. And I'll also mention another rescheduled show. Our retirement session was also supposed to be on June 22nd. 
also that presenter was able to do it that date and she rescheduled for September 7th. So if you're looking for a retirement one, you thought it had already happened, you didn't miss it, it's coming up too. So that wraps up for today. Thank you everybody for being here. Good to see you again, Kendra. We'll definitely try and get you on uh, on more than like what, three, four years now again. <laughs> Sounds good. Make it a more regular thing. Good Thank to see you. you. Yeah, and hopefully we'll see everyone on at a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.